is covering the spread. Part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We've got a full 10 match slate for EPL Match Week 25 coming up Saturday through Monday. So we've got Austin Cass on the show to break down his thoughts on that from a betting perspective. Good excuse to get Austin back on the show once again. Later on, I'll talk about NASCAR at Daytona, break down some bets I like for the Truck Series and Xfinity Series, and maybe talk about uh, some Cup Series stuff as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Austin Cass. Check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin, happy to have you back on the show for today. How are you doing? Doing really well. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing delightful. More delightful now that we are back to our regular cadence of having you on every Friday once again. That darn other football getting in the way of our Austin cast time here on the show. So we'll dive into EPL Match Week 25 and outline where Austin sees value for this weekend and highlight a couple of key matches as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We have our breakdown of the NBA All-Star Weekend festivities already up with Tom Vecchio. There is a timestamp for that in the episode description description over on FanDuel Research, over on Apple, on Spot. Skip ahead past the Thursday betting thoughts and into the three-point contest, dunk contest thoughts from Tom as well. That's up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus to get these shows as they are posted each and every day. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread. Also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. No show on Monday because we are off for a company holiday, but Back with you once again on Tuesday of next week. Let's dive right in, Austin, and talk about Match Week 25 in the EPL. Let's begin with what looks like the headline match in the slate. That is Man City taking on Chelsea. And Chelsea hasn't had the best year by any means. So Man City's money line is minus 310 right now. When you look at this match, anything stand out to you? Yeah, so uh, my favorite bet from this game is uh, actually a player prop. And... It's uh, Phil Foden to score or assist for Man City. Uh, I think City roll in this game. The the betting odds reflect that the odds makers also think that. Um, And it's a little bit puzzling to me that Foden is plus 105 to score or assist, given how well he's been playing this year. He has eight goals and seven assists in league play. Uh, Across his last four matches in all competitions, he has four goals and two assists. Uh, City are pretty much doing what they've done the past few years. Uh, around this time of year, they flip the switch, just start running away with things. They haven't lost since December 6th. That's a run of 12 matches. They've scored at least twice in 11 of those 12 games. Uh, in their earlier meeting with Chelsea this year, it was a wild 4-4 game. Uh, City amassed 2.9 expected goals in that one, and that was at Stamford Bridge. This one will be at home for City. Uh, they're minus city are minus three thirty to go over one and a half goals, so they're probably going to score goals and probably going to win this match. But I think the pretty much the standard match uh, odds are pretty pretty fair and they're pretty accurate. I think, but this Foden one plus one hundred five, um, I, I feel like I pretty much come come to you with a score or assist prop every time. <laughs> I, I really love that wiggle room that they don't have to score the goal. And sometimes you can get an assist for not really doing much at all. You just (laughs) dish it to somebody and they make a special play. But uh, my only word of warning here is I would make sure he starts. Luckily, uh, this is a 12.30 Eastern time game. He'll probably start, but City played uh, in Denmark midweek in the Champions League. So there's a chance maybe they rest a few players. But given where they're at in the league, uh, they really uh, can't afford to rest too many guys. So I'm guessing that he'll play and... Like I said, it's not one of the times you got to get up early to do it. That is a blessing for sure. I said 1230 match on Saturday. Foden is plus 105, and there are quite a few players ahead of him in the score or assist market. Why is Foden this far down the pecking order in your eyes, and why do you think he should be a bit higher? Well, some of those guys are strikers who probably won't start, Okay, uh, like Bob and Hamilton there. Um, But... um, yeah, De Bruyne has come back. He is a really unbelievable player. He's just been – it's insane how good he's been in just the limited matches he's played since he's come back from injury. 
but that kind of bumps Foden down the pecking order a little bit in terms of uh, he doesn't take corners anymore. De Bruyne will, and De Bruyne and Holland are, are just the guys who are probably going to take the most shots on target. Alvarez, when he plays, is also right up there. But lately, Alvarez hasn't been starting, and having De Bruyne probably gives Foden better chances to record assists than what he would have had otherwise. But so far, it's actually helped his goal scoring form. Uh, De Bruyne has helped set him up. But really, they just have a ridiculous group of attacking players that they can put out there at one time. And any of those starting guys who are in kind of their front four, depending on what formation they use, if they're at plus money in pretty much any match, they're very appealing. All right, so Foden is at plus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook for Man City versus Chelsea on Saturday. Again, as Austin said, make sure you check the starting lineup once it comes out Saturday to ensure that Foden is, in fact, in there. Just to safeguard yourself in case he does not play, but then or does not start, but then subs in later on. Eight other matches across Saturday and Sunday specifically, Austin. So we look at those other matches. Which bets stand out to you as of now? So my favorite bets of the weekend come from the Everton-Crystal Palace matchup, which is uh, the lone Monday game for this mm -hmm. week. Uh, every, this one's at Everton, and I really like Everton in this one, and there's two ways I want to take advantage of that. Um, I like Everton just on the money line straight up at minus 140, but I also like Everton over one and a half goals, which is minus 104. Um, you can find that in the goals tab. I think you, you probably got the hang of it now. <laughs> but uh, this is a really big matchup at the bottom of the table. Everton are currently in the drop zone in 18th, and Palace are in 15th. But despite the places in the table, pretty much any way you slice it, Everton have been the better side this year. Uh, their expected goal differential, according to FBRS model, is plus 2.9, which actually ranks ninth in the league. Um Basically, the main reason they are where they are is they got a 10-point deduction uh, as a punishment handed down to the club. Without that, they'd be safe in the middle of the table. But with it, they're really going to be up against it and have very little wiggle room for uh, where they're going to be in a relegation battle. On top of uh, Palace, sorry, their expected goal differential is minus 8.5, so roughly 10 goals worse than Everton's. On top of the XG numbers, Palace are going to be without – uh, Michael Olise and Eberuche Eze, they're two best players who I think we've talked about them before on this podcast. With those two guys, they probably wouldn't be in a relegation fight, but without them, they're one of the worst teams in the league. Those two have combined for 15 uh, total goals and assists, and Palace only have 27 goals in the season. And they haven't been good on the other end either. They failed to keep a clean sheet in each of their last 13 matches, and that stretch started with a 3-2 home loss to Everton. Uh, plus, uh, this match being at Everton is a really big deal. Over the last two seasons, Everton sported with relegation, but have really been saved by their home matches. And things are trending that way this year, too. Uh, over their last five home, home fixtures, they've lost just once, despite playing Aston Villa, Tottenham, Man City, Chelsea, and Newcastle in those matches. So personally, I slightly prefer the Everton money line at minus 140, but I also really like them to go over uh, one and a half goals at minus 104. That number, as you mentioned, is in the goals tab at FanDuel Sportsbook. Home team of over under one half goals, minus 104. Uh, so you're getting a bit of exposure via the money line, but then you can also add in a bit more should they decide to have a pretty good offensive output. Any consideration for you for the other alt markets here? Because you do have over under two and a half goals. Uh, over is plus 330. Over three and a half might be ambitious. That's 10 to one right now. Consideration for you for playing this like a ladder situation where you put your largest bet size on the money line, put a bit more on over one and a half goals, a bit more on over two and a half goals, or do you think that this is just the ideal way to play things for Everton? Um, it's definitely worth considering. Three, three and a half is is definitely pretty ambitious, which the yeah. odds reflect. Um, I could see it happening because things are kind of snowballing for Crystal Palace right now. So if they got down, maybe they just kind of like fold, but uh, with how important this match is for Everton and, and getting three points would be massive for them. I see them probably uh, being a little more defensive and conservative if they score twice. So that would be my hesitation there, okay. but overall they've been much better in attack uh, according to XG than most people would assume they've been and they're capable on their day, especially at home. 
All righty. So that it market again, Everton over one and a half goals, minus 104, along with the Everton money line at minus 140. And then we also had Phil Foden to score or assist plus 105 in the Man City versus Chelsea match. That is Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy the soccer this weekend. And we'll talk to you once again next week here. Same time, same place. Sounds good. Enjoy the NASCAR this weekend. I very much will, and I think you will as well. Will. That is Austin Cass again on Twitter at Austin Cass. Speaking of NASCAR, we're going to dive in to Daytona and not just talk about the Cup Series, but also expand a bit on the Truck Series and Xfinity Series and outline where I see value here in just one second. But first, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA, must be 21+, plus and present in select states. First online, real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now a trouble bonus bets that expire after seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, one 1- 800 522 4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1 770 stop in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia. 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Let's dig in now to NASCAR once again. We did see the qualifying races for the Daytona 500 last night to set the starting grid for the Cup Series side of things. And I think the big takeaway from last night's races was that Toyota looked really good when they were in the draft. They won both qualifying races with Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick. And when you look at the odds at FanDuel Sportsbook, I don't think that's being priced in quite as much as it should be. And it does create a bit of value, I think, on Martin Truex Jr. Truex is 23 to 1 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The implied odds at plus 2300 are 4.2%. Right now, my model, I have Truex at 4.9% to win this race without giving him a huge bump based on what we saw last night. But anecdotally, I do think they deserve that just based on how fast they were. It's not just the fact they won, but they were able to work together. They were able to work their way through the pack despite qualifying poorly. And that does matter a pretty decent amount. Truex specifically will start mid-pack because he had an issue where he ran out of fuel during the dual race. Tried to help Jimmy Johnson get in the Daytona 500 as a Toyota teammate as well. He did do so successfully, which means Toyota will have nine cars in this race, which better creates more cooperation between the teams than we've seen before. Now, Truex notoriously has never won on a super speedway, but did come close in Daytona a couple years ago, finished second behind Eric Jones, his teammate at the time. And I think he's been a lot better than what perception is of him on super speedways. So as I look at the board right now for the Daytona 500 specifically, I think the best value is in taking Martin Truex Jr. 23 to 1 to win this race. Again, I've got him at 4.9%. Implied odds are uh, down at 4.2%. That's enough value for me to feel good about Truex. Again, despite the fact he notoriously has never won on a track like this. So for the Cup Series... That's kind of the the one place I saw value with the reposted odds, so we'll stick to just that one for right now. As far as other series, uh, Truck Series odds at Daytona are not currently back up at FanDuel Sportsbook, so we'll have to check back on those later to see if they do get posted. But they had a practice session yesterday, and we don't tend to see things shift a ton based on practice. I'm going to assume that we're going to see odds reopen about where they were before. And if they do so, I want to be on Tyler Ankrum, as the one bet where I see good value right now in the truck series. Ankrum was 20 to 1 yesterday at FanDuel Sportsbook, and this will be Ankrum's debut with McAnally Hilgeman Racing. And he wasn't in bad equipment before with Hattori, but 
this is definitely better because McAnally Hilgeman was able to get wins on more speed centric tracks last year. So I think it's an upgrade for Ankrum and that does matter because speed, if it's not like as essential here, I'd rather be in a fast truck than a short, than a slow one. And Ankrum himself is also good on pack tracks, even if he doesn't always have the finishes to show for it. Since the start of 2022, the truck series has run six pack races. Ankrum has had a top 10 average running position in four of those six races. Those races came during his age 21 and age 22 seasons. And if you look at aging curves, uh, David Smith, formerly of The Athletic, now with RFK Racing, did a lot of research into when drivers hit their peaks. Their big peak is at age 39. Ankrum is nowhere near that. But there is like a mini peak around age 24 when you start to see their hand-eye coordination get to a better spot. Ankrum, not quite there yet, but getting closer. So we should see continued improvements. My model has Ankrum's win odds at 6.1%. His implied odds, if he does reopen at 20 to 1, are 4.8%. So I'd be okay taking Ankrum anything 18 to 1 or longer, personally. I think that's appropriate given how good he's been on these tracks, given the improved equipment. I think that does make a lot of sense. So Tyler Ankrum, the one truck series bet I'm, I'm eyeing right now. In the Xfinity series, we did see some value get scooped up yesterday. I was on Riley Herbst, uh, talked about him. In yesterday's uh, sim piece over on FanDuel Research, he was 22 to 1. He has since shortened down to uh, 19 to 1. So still a tiny, tiny value for me, but not big enough for me to feel great about that. If you can find Herbst longer, 22 to 1, you know, post-practice, post-qualifying, then I would be in there for sure. But that's the that's that's not there right now. The biggest value that is available is Daniel Suarez at 16 to 1. Suarez is a situation which you will see at times in the uh, truck series and Xfinity series where I think he's being improperly handicapped based on his team. Listed on the entry list is Suarez as driving for SS Greenlight Racing, and their equipment is not good. But in actuality, if you look at uh, Fox Sports Bob Pockrass's reporting, it's a car prepared by Colleg Racing. And there's evidence that's true because uh, Suarez is running a Chevy while SS Greenlight typically runs Fords. Colleague has a very good Xfinity program, so that means that Suarez is in a very competitive ride, and he's gotten much better on pack tracks in Cup recently. We Over the past two years, in the next-gen era, Suarez has seven top tens in 12 races on pack tracks. That's why, sorry, my model has uh, Suarez with the second-highest win odds in the field at 8.7%. That is well above his implied odds of 5.9%. So I personally think Suarez is a great bet. He's 16 to 1. I'm very on board with that. If you want a bit of a long shot, uh, Ryan Sieg is 50 to 1. Prefer him in non-outright markets like top fives, but we don't have those at FanDuel. So I think for me, it's more so about Suarez at 16 to 1. Herps, if you can get him at 22 to 1 or longer, and then maybe if you just want a fun bet uh, that you expect to lose, Ryan Sieg 50 to 1 could be the way you go there. So Updated betting recommendations for Daytona. I like Martin Truex Jr. 23 to 1 to win in Cup. I like uh, Tyler Ankrum 20 to 1 or longer to win in the Truck Series. Daniel Suarez 16 to 1 in the Xfinity Series as well. That's all that we have for today and this week here on the show. As mentioned, no show on Monday next week due to a company holiday. Back with you on Tuesday. Big thank you once again to Austin Cass for breaking down EPL Match Week 25. Find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim and Check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today and this week. Good luck to you with your bets across this weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Tuesday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.